Hello, everybody, and welcome to Dot to Dot. Today, we're going to talk about the vault theory flood system and the tunnels that are shown on the Ontiara schematic. Now, in my last video, I talked about the entrance where you go underground. And let me bring that up on Google Earth here. It is right here, the entrance you head underground. And that was determined by the geometry from uh, cone E, the valve, and the hole under the trap door. Now, right here, I have somewhat uh, my idea. And some of these ideas also come from uh, Olivier from Oak Island Research. And, you know, we've talked a lot about the flood system and, and different ways of evacuating the system and where the water comes from. And there's one thing on the landmark map that we haven't discussed. And that is, and let me see, I can move it so you can read it, is La Basin and La Barrage. Now, La Basin is, means basically what it does sort of in English, a basin or a pond or a, a body of, small body of standing water. And uh, Le Barrage means uh, the dam or a dam. And, you know, they're pointing right here. And I find it interesting that the basin is this probably this circle, which is right in the middle of Nolan's Cross, right where the headstone is. So, you know, the headstone had a lot to do with us finding where to head underground. And where to head underground has all to do with uh, basically finding where to divert the waters of the flood system to lower the vault. And also the dam points to right here. And another thing is uh, one of the things that was offshore, the real thing that was offshore, uh, that Fred Nolan had discovered. And let me take off this landmark map here. And... You know, offshore here, Fred Nolan had talked about there was like an old Pirate's Wharf Foundation stones that were all piled up here. And he actually has his uh, uh, wharf built on the foundations of some of those stones, I believe. So there was a big uh, anomaly that nobody knew where all these stones came from. They were all piled up in Fred Nolan's. Now, perhaps that's where the water is entering into the flood system. Now, I know that the common uh, notion is that the flood system, let me put this back to north here, that the flood system enters in through the finger veins in Smith's Cove and goes to the money pit. Well, I'm going to suggest an alternative theory, and this is through the understanding of the vault theory and the Antiar schematic. Now, I've talked about the Antiar schematic, and, and this is the original one, the Antiar schematic, that, show, that basically shows the tunnel system underneath uh, Oak Island. And basically, it shows the flood system. And we've talked about where A is the Oak entrance, and according to La Formula, you dig, uh, you dig at 40 feet, at 40 feet, a 45 degree angle, and you enter this, this uh, tunnel that goes 522 feet to this valve here, which we call La Hamp. And then you go another 1,065 pied or 1,142 feet to G, which is the oak entrance. But in order to, to access this vault here, which is normally when this is up and the water pressure is loaded in here, this, this box raises up to the ceiling. So we have to close this valve at La Hamp and open the valve here. Now, this is the valve that opens, and then there's the hole under the trap door, which lets the water out. Now, one of the main things that, let me get this uh, on TR schematic. We have a better one 
that's redrawn that shows it a little bit better. One of the the things that some people have a problem with is that they say, well, where does the water go once the whole, like it has to be evacuated out into the ocean or to the sur uh, surface. That's not necessarily true because the only volume that needs to be evacuated to open the vault is the amount of water basically from, you know, the bottom of the, the, the vault when it's at its closed level to the point of where it hits the stops and sets and rests to where it's in the open position. Basically, the volume up here uh, above it, that would be the volume of water you would need to evacuate the system. So how do you do that? Well, you don't necessarily have to bring it to the surface. You just dig a shaft and a tunnel and a hole, and perhaps that may have some drain natural drainage in it, and the water is just evacuated down into that enough to where it is uh, it lowers the vault. You don't have to evacuate all the water out of the whole tunnel systems. So it doesn't need to go to the surface. That's basically what I'm saying. But in this schematic here, we have what is called what looks like the money pit. And of course, you got the uh, the finger drains going to Smith's Cove. But you also have these other uh, areas that are in question like this one. It looks like it stops here. But we don't know. It may go on or it may go out, you know, away from us. This may be uh, where it is pressurized. And then you have this other tunnel that may be also where it's pressurized. But we know from history when they sh uh, sank uh, shaft 15 back in the 1900s that it went to the south shore. They actually sent mud uh, through shaft 15 and shaft 15, uh, let's see if I can put it up for you here. Uh, shaft 15 was basically located uh, f about uh, 75, 75 feet north, uh, south, west of the money pit. And I have those uh, here. I could probably get them up really quick. Let's see, shafts. Uh, sorry about that. But the, I'm looking for the old shaft history. Here it is. So shaft 15 would be right here. And shaft 15, when they sank this, and you can read this if you want, but uh, it said that the, they put in red dye. And when the red dye was poured into the pit, the searchers now had two known flood tunnels to contend with. Moreover, the southern tunnel must have had several inlets. Now they're saying they're inlets, but I'm saying differently. As the muddy water appeared at three widespread locations offshore. Okay, and then they put in also red dye and it appeared on different locations off the, the South Shore. So there was a, they discovered a flood tunnel system here. So let's go back to the basin and the dam. Now, Olivier at Oak Island Research has uh, proposed that uh, the barrage and the bark, which are the boats on the Rochefoucauld map, are actually showing us the perhaps like check valves. And this is the way they would operate. You would have water come in and this water would be uh, uh, from a pipe that is connected to the ocean and the water would come in and it would fill what is called the basin. Now this little check valve or dam would be the dam. It would allow water to come in, but it would have these gates that would not allow water to come out. So the pressure of the seawater from the tide would force the water in here 
and pressurize this basin by the basin. And that basin would go down and it would go to where basically the hump, which is where that, that valve C is, and it would take a turn when you open it up it would take a turn and it would also have maybe perhaps a similar check valve in it where the water comes in and raises the vault up and then it you know pressurizes it because it will close after this is completely pressurized now what happens to the water when this valve is open what happens to the water well it has to go somewhere because this is going to, the basin is going to keep being pressurized. So what they did is they created these relief valves, which come down and they go off to the South shore and to this. One of the reasons I also think that this may be a clue is that when they, uh, made the hole, I believe it was A13.5. Remember they saw, they saw the water surging out of the hole? It told me, at least it was telling me, that somehow it was being pressurized. Now, whether it was being pressurized by the drill or not, I don't know. But it's just a, an idea that I had that maybe it is the pressurization that's being seen from the dam at the basin. I also never uh, really understood how these small finger outlets were or inlets were supposed to uh, flood the tunnel system uh, up to uh, where it was being pressurized like it was coming out of the hole at A13. I think these tunnels that are coming off of that they had discovered off the south and to Smith's Cove are basically relief valves to when the hump is, is open. When it's open, this is pressurized. And then once this is pressurized, once this has enough water, the excess water goes out this way. And this is lower than this. So this would be a lot lower than the uh, relief valves. So it would go up. It would fill up with water until it comes to the surface. So that's uh, what I have for the flood system. Now, does the hole un is the hole under the trap door here and the valve here? Well, after uh, seeing how they work geometrically in that they find the head uh, where you head underground in that uh, the parallelogram, it, I'm starting to think that these may not be in this location. For instance, why would you have to go this long distance with underground tunnel to this valve and then go another long distance for the hole under the trap door? So I'm thinking you head underground. And that these flood systems, you know, may be just right here. They may be somewhere right here. They may even go over to the shoreline. But like I said before, you don't need, you don't need to go all the way to the surface to relieve the water from the, let me cancel that, from the, tunnel system you only need to relieve enough water to lower the vault so it doesn't necessarily you just have to have a displacement of that water now another thing is too is on the Ontiara schematic you notice the money pit this is the this these logs here there's even here a little thing that looks like the 90 foot stone this is if this is the money pit the oak entrance doesn't necessarily have to be the money pit. And the money pit may, in fact, be just a service shaft that was used in order to build 
this underground flood system, especially on the east end of the island. So on the east end of the island, up to Lahamp, they or to the vault, they used uh, the this shaft, which is what they discovered as the money pit. So because the money pit, and I've been asked this before, the money pit is right here. And the oak entrance is right here. So it's about, I think it's like 70 or 80 feet. It's 83 feet. And it's almost due south of the historical money pit, which is basically uh, just where the 1930 survey and chapel and Hedden thought it was because chapel shaft was here and Hedden shaft was here. So, you know, when you find the oak entrance, you dig 40 feet. And then at 40 feet, you dig a 45 degrees to enter the 522 entrance. And you dig, if this, if the, you dig your money pit six feet in diameter, the distance would be 17.4 feet. That's, you know, that's just because it's Google Earth. You dig around 17 something feet according to, uh, the geometry that I've done with the vault theory. And then you would enter that tunnel, which is right here, B. And you enter it and you go to La Hamp, which is 560 feet or 522 pied, according to the formula, and you close that valve. And that is Lahamp right here. So you go 522 feet here to Lahamp. You close the valve. And then over in this area, you head underground and you would open the valve. And then you would remove the lid from the trap door and the vault will lower. So that's my idea of the flood system. I don't necessarily think the hole under the trap door, the valve, or even the vault for that matter, is uh, in this locate in the locations on the landmark map. Uh, they are used in the geometric um, calculation uh, for finding where to head underground, perhaps. But uh, this is uh, what I think of the flood system, and that the the flood tunnels that go to Smith Cove in the south are relief valves. They're not inlets. And that the basin here, right here, would be where you would uh, get the uh, supply of water for this flood system. So that's what I have for today. I'll thank you for uh, watching. Uh, like and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.